Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Divine Feminine Healers Podcast. It is your host, Angelica Hur, and I have such an exciting announcement that I am relaunching the Divine Healers membership. So this is actually one of my first offerings that I started my business with five years ago when I officially made it an LLC. And it's something I truly feel like I've been manifesting ever since I was a little girl. So I grew up competitive dancing and I was on this dance company where we were all women. And of course we shared this common passion for dance. And some of my best memories as an adolescent and a child all the way like through my teens is being in that kinship with these women who I still call today some of my very, very best friends. And it's just so magical when you really find those soul connections with those people that no matter what season of life you're in, not only can it also parallel what they're going through, even though you may not even be living in the same state anymore, or you may not even have the same careers or the same life path, but you're still going through the same things. It's like, wow, the universe really put these people in my life for a reason because I was meant to learn and grow from them and receive their support and nurturance. And that got me thinking when I started my spiritual journey, I felt so lonely, which felt so the opposite of how I was my whole entire life. I always had this big Italian family. I always had these really close friend groups and it felt really hard to not to share this passion that I had for spirituality and for healing with my friends and family. And not that they weren't supportive in their own ways, but they just didn't know about it. And I wasn't able to share all the details of what I was learning in my Ayurvedic certification program and what I was learning in yoga because they weren't experiencing it. That wasn't their path. So I remember asking Spirit for a spiritual community that I could join that would give me that same kinship that I've experienced my whole entire life. That's what I truly, really wanted because one of the things I love about my friendships is having really deep conversations and I thought, wow, if I could rally a group of spiritual beings who wanted to have those deep conversations, imagine how enriching they can be. So when I asked Spirit for this, Spirit said, you are not meant to find that community, you're meant to create it. And at the time I was like, oh my God, like what a lame response. Like, I don't want to create it. I wanted to just fall, it to fall into my lap. And it felt like, how on earth would I be able to create it? Like the people in my life right now are not into spirituality. So I have to go and find all these people and bring them together. I just didn't see how it would all work out. So I kind of ignored that message for a year. And in around that time, as I was starting to get closer to my connection to spirit, and I really got connected to the moon. I got my moon tattoo with all the phases and I had this impulse in me to lead a moon ceremony. I've been wanting to do it for a very long time, but it felt really scared because it was different than the yoga classes I was teaching or even the Ayurvedic workshops that I was doing. It felt like a little bit too out there. So it just came a time, it was right before lockdown actually happened, where I had that urge within me. I don't know if anyone's experienced that before, where you literally just have to do it because the pull is so strong and your intuitive knowing is so strong. There's like no other option. So I started my first moon ceremony virtually because it was right before lockdown or right as lockdown was happening. And that triggered the first time that I launched my membership. This was five years ago. And wow, what I brought together was this magical group of women from all over the world. It was everything that I had been manifesting like women who were so talented and experienced, but so driven and ready to learn more about their healing journey, wanted to explore the depths of their emotions, wanted to learn more about these ancient sciences of Ayurveda, yoga, and Reiki, and the support and nurturance that everyone gave each other in the group was next level. I mean, of course, growing up in that competitive dance company environment, there was a lot of that scarcity mindset and jealousy and a lot of things that happen in young teenage girls. So for me, re-experiencing that community where that was completely taken out of the equation and everyone was just genuinely happy and cheering everyone on, it was magnetic. I was like, wow, everything 
that I've been wanting is here right in front of me. And it's incredible that I was able to create it. So now I'm relaunching the Divine Healers membership and I'm adding even more amazing gifts than I did in the past. So as always, staple to my membership are my moon ceremonies that I've been doing for the past five years. These will look like healing activations. We may do a Kundalini practice. We may do a Reiki healing experience. Or this may look like a live interactive training. It will really just kind of depend on what the need is of the group and what's happening astrologically. Monthly, you're also going to receive astrological forecasts for the month. You'll receive that in your moon book. And I'll also be talking about that and working with your personal charts in our moon ceremonies. You will also have seasonal Ayurvedic trainings that will help to heal your body and align with that doshic season and also how to align your business with the Ayurvedic principles, which I'm so excited to get into because I know a lot of you in here are just starting your business and you're wanting to start it from a place of soul purpose that is really heart centered. And these are going to be the perfect trainings to get you started with that. I also am going to have a full library of healing resources in the portal. This will look like meditation classes, yoga classes, breath work, and training so that even when we're not doing our live activations, you are going to feel totally supported. And of course, you have a virtual community that you'll have access to 24-7. So you'll be able to introduce yourself. You'll be able to talk about things that you're going through. And this is where the magnetic connections actually happen, where you are having the same experience as someone all the way across the other side of the world. And when you ever you need nurturance, love, and support, that you just tap into that chat and you get it tenfold in return. It's my favorite thing to witness. I have lots more surprises that will be coming in the membership. You'll get discounts to all of my courses. And I am reopening my one-on-one -on -one sessions exclusive just to the members in my community so that I'm able to really only channel my energy for the people who are in my community. So this may look like Ayurvedic consultations. This can look like Reiki intuitive healing sessions. And this can also look like business consultations for your spiritual business. So you can now sign up for the Divine Healers membership with the link in the show notes. And I have an introductory rate in which you'll be grandmothered into if you sign up now before June 21st. Okay, now for today's episode. I am so excited because we're gently transitioning into Pitta season, which is the season where I feel most alive. It's when my birthday is. And I definitely relate a lot to the Pitta Dosha as do a lot of my clients because I love the fire element lives deeply within me. So even though Pitta season officially starts on June 21st, intuitively, you may already be feeling these pulls. I mean, look at nature outside, at least for me on the West Coast, it's already being warmer temps outside. There's like full blooms in nature. And what happens when nature's projecting more of that fire element, we too are going to experience that as well. So for those of us who are more prone to Pitta imbalances, this could be inflammation, which we know drives a lot of chronic conditions. So things like IBS or even hormonal disorders like PCOS and amenorrhea, these can be heightened and exasperated during the Pitta season. Also things like acne can be aggravated during Pitta season and sometimes even weight gain during Pitta season. And that's because we tend to, in our American culture, at least do a lot of barbecues, a lot of fried foods, um, fast foods, we're out, we're doing street fests, and we're partying, and we're, um, you know, all things that are fun and great, but this, these fried foods have the fire element to it, and that can actually cause more inflammation in the body, and for pittas, it can have us to hold on to weight a little bit more. So, one last imbalance that can actually happen with pittas that I want to talk about is the emotional and the mental piece. So when pittas are out of balance, they can have a harsh inner critic voice, or they could be so laser focused on their work and productivity that they kind of miss having fun and play. So for example, I know a lot of us are kind of at that point of waiting for new opportunities to pull through and what's going to be the next thing. And it's really hard for pittas to be in that space of waiting for when that's going to happen and to have compassion for themselves and to be patient. And emotionally too, 
this comes with having that harsh inner critic voice of judging ourselves for not being at a certain point in our lives, for not making enough money, or for not having a certain amount of accolades. All these things can especially be heightened during pitta season. So while that is all true, what I love about Ayurveda is that it empowers us that we can take a hold of our lives. This is preventative medicine. We know in advance that our fire element can get overactive, that these pitta imbalances can tend to happen even more so in the summer season. And if you're a pitta predominant or you have a pitta imbalance, you can start taking action before we even get into pitta season so that you can heal. So I'm going to be leading a masterclass on this in the Divine Healers membership. This is going to be on June 21st. And in this masterclass, we're going to go deep into all things Pitta season, how to align your body and how to align your business. But I wanted to give you all a little taste of how to start healing with Pitta season as we start to transition. Now, what I love about Ayurveda is that, I know I love a lot of things about Ayurveda, but it can be so simple. It really doesn't have to be like, all of a sudden, I wake up the next morning and my whole diet and lifestyle has to be overhauled because we have entered pitta season. No. How can you just lean into the voice of your intuition of what your needs and wants are, how that mirrors nature, and just make these little tweaks into your life? So I'm going to be sharing just a little bit of tweaks that I am making in my life right now. So for example, if you've noticed, the sun is rising earlier and it is best to rise with the sun to align with our circadian rhythm. When we align with our circadian rhythm, this optimizes our energy levels and balances our hormone levels. So it's super important for our vitality. So I've been trying to wake up earlier in the morning. I mean, I've also been jet lagged, so it's kind of been up and down for me personally. But 5.45 a.m. on the West Coast, that's when the sun has been rising. So I've been trying to be mindful to wake up around that time period. And my body feels so good waking up with the sun. I feel like I have that's where I have the most energy. And that's also the best time is to do your meditation practice is early in the morning as well, because that's when we secrete the hormones and the pineal gland that can really activate um, things like melatonin and things that can really relax the nervous system. And that can set up our whole entire day. That's why in Ayurveda, we really stress morning routine from the time you wake up to the time you take your last bite of breakfast, because it can really set the tone for your day. Now, also, what I'm inviting into my life is trying to implement more of that cooling effect. So in the form of my lifestyle practices, this is going to look like adding a cool down to my workouts. So I love a rigorous, intense workout. Like I need to get in a good sweat every day. However, I know if it's too intense or if I'm just going right into my day after that intensity, it can hijack my nervous system. So what's really important for Pitta is I'm never going to tell Pitta to stop working out. I remember in the past when Ayurvedic practitioners would tell me, oh yeah, just swap out your workouts for like yin yoga and this. I'm like, absolutely not. And I actually have done that before and it was not what my body wanted and needed. So I'm all about balance and just making little tweaks. So what I've been doing is adding in more yin yoga postures at the end of my practice maybe doing a breath work or a meditation practice to ground my body and just start to cool the body down before I go back into my day with that same intensity because everything is energy. So if you've already got that kind of very robust type of energy and then you're taking that in for the rest of your day, your nervous system is going to be out of balance for the rest of the day. Um, and it's going to cause more stress, more inflammation in your body, mind, and spirit. Another lifestyle practice that I am trying to incorporate and trying to make space for is moonlight walks. So in the summertime, it is so great to not only align with the rhythms of the moon, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, but the moon represents Soma, represents this very nourishing, cooling, motherly effect. So by walking and gazing at the moon at night, especially for pittas, it can have that cooling effect on us, especially if, I don't know about you, but you know, I usually take nature breaks throughout the work day to break up my day, but you know, the sun is really hot in the middle of the day. That's when it's at its hottest. So I'm finding it a little bit harder to want to go out in the day because I'm trying to stay cool. So I've been kind of switching my walks to be when the sun goes down, um, a little bit more towards sunset. And if you can also gaze during the 
apertures of sunrise and sunset, that's actually when you can get red light therapy and that also helps to reset your circadian rhythm. So just making these little small adjustments. It's not saying if you didn't already have a walk, adding a walk in your day, but if you already are doing one, how can you just adjust it so that it can really align with the season? And now, what is the best diet to align with the season? Well, I'm going to go in way more depth into this in our masterclass, but just so you can start inviting these ideas in, it's bringing in these cooling qualities into your diet. So a lot of times when pitches are inflamed, think about the tissues of the body as being inflamed. That can cause things like looser stools, that can cause things like acne, um, there's excess oil in the body. So it's important to have foods that are cooling to the system that can soothe the intestinal lining of the system that can soothe inflammation. So the best way to start by this is just by looking at what nature is producing. I mean, go to the farmer's market. Berry season is alive and well. And berries have that sweet taste, which are very cooling. They're very light, so they're easy for the body to digest. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, I've just been loving all of them. And also, you'll see that squashes, summer squashes are in season. So zucchini and yellow squash are in season. And those are also really soothing to the intestinal lining of the digestive tract. It can really help to soothe and have healthy bowel movements if that's something that you usually struggle with during pizza season. So this gives you just a little taste of how you can start making these little adjustments of diet and lifestyle practices for pizza season. And if you want our full layout of diet and lifestyle practices to completely heal your pizza dosha and align with pizza season, then you can join the Divine Healers membership where we'll have our masterclass on June 21st. And this masterclass goes way beyond just healing the physical body, which is important. But what I often find in Ayurveda is that it's diluted with only diet and lifestyle practices and that we miss the emotional and the spiritual and the mental body that comes along with it. So what I'm even more interested in healing is that spiritual body and learning what chakras tend to get out of balance in this time of year and how we can start healing. So one of the chakras that gets the most out of balance is the sacral chakra. And sacral chakra, when we're too out of balance with this, we can feel really rigid. So a lot of times pitches, I'll find them that they're too structured in their days and rigid. And they're over, their productivity is at a level where they're, they can't keep up with it, where their whole day is ruled by it. And there's no space for joy and for play. And over time, why that can hurt is because it leads to burnout then that also ends up affecting the physical body. Your chronic conditions can flare up. You feel like you're more hot tempered. You feel like your anger and rage can be set off a lot more quickly. Now, as women, I find that when pitch is out of balance, we tend to be more high estrogen dominant. So I've worked with a lot of women where this shows up as PCOS or endometriosis or very intense PMS symptoms because when we have PMS symptoms that usually occur the week before we get our period, that's the pitta time of our moon cycle. So that's when we're going to experience those pitta imbalances. Well, tending to the sacral chakra is tending to our hormones. So in this masterclass, we're going to talk all about how to balance your hormones and how you can tend to your sacral chakra so that you can heal your pitta dosha, so you can feel like you're in the flow, so you can reconnect with your feminine, so you can have balanced summer with having fun and play, but also getting your shit done and being on top of it. So I am so excited for this masterclass. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about our hormones and sacral chakra healing next week on my newsletter and also on my Instagram page. So you can also sign up for my newsletter and follow me on Instagram with the link in the show notes if you're not already. And also what I shared on Instagram just recently was my grocery haul that aligns with pitta season. So if you're looking to, okay, what can I get at the grocery store this week that can be more healing for my pitta dosha, go check out that reel on my Instagram page. And that is all I have for you all today. It's just getting you a little bit transitioned into pitta season. Join the masterclass by signing up for the Divine Healers membership. It's going to be so much fun fun connecting with like-minded souls and I am so excited to see you there and next week we're going to be talking all about how you can heal your sacral chakra and heal your hormones especially when you have a pitta imbalance and how that's all interwoven together so I hope everyone has a blissful week weekend ahead whenever you are listening to this and I'll see you all next time